Hello and welcome to our take with Corin and Ty where we do recaps and reviews of movies. And um, for those who have seen some of our previous um, reviews, you know it's my turn to pick now. So I'm going to be picking our next few shows. And the first show I picked was one that I hadn't originally was going to do, but we started watching it on our, um, our Friday family movie night. We started watching it and said, hmm. It's not actually that bad, so we're going to go ahead and do um, a review on this one. And so in the movie we selected, or I selected, is The Adam Project. with um, That's a new movie that's out on Netflix. And so this is the movie that we are going to be reviewing. She didn't want to do it, but after she started seeing some of the movies, she said, okay, we can, we can go ahead and do this. So she, she focused in and was ready to do sit down and do our review. So we're doing The Adam Project, and it's starring Ryan Reynolds as um, Adam Reed, um, Walker Scoville. He plays the young Adam Reed. Um, Jennifer Garner plays Ellie Reed. Mark Ruffalo plays Louis Reed, the father. Um, Jennifer Garner plays the mother. Um, Zoe Saldana, she's in this as um, Adam's wife. And then um, Catherine Keener, she plays the antagonist in this movie um, by the name of Maya Sorian. Um, so that's the primary cast. And so good cast. I like Ryan Reynolds. I like Garner. I like Mark Ruffalo from his Marvel work and other things. So um, I thought it was a good cast. And that's why I was interested in watching it to begin with for our family night. So what do you think about the cast? Well, yeah, that's the reason why I sat down and watched it. Usually, I don't. <laughs> usually, I don't like uh, Corey's Friday night picks because he just he'll watch anything. Let's be honest. But um, I like sci-fi. I do, and I do like Ryan Reynolds, and I really like Mark Ruffalo. Um, I love him as Hulk. So I was excited just because of the cast, um, but yeah, I thought I thought they had a great cast. Okay, so um, the Adam Project is basically a a time travel type sci-fi movie, um, and typically I don't like I like the sci-fi aspect of the time travel, but sometimes the time travel stuff can get a bit confusing with all the time travel and the back and forth and how stuff overlaps, you go back in the past, how it affects the future. So I was interested to see how this one was going to um, play out and answer some of those those questions that come up with these time travel type movies. So, um, but that's basically, it's a time travel type movie. So with that said, let's get into it. And so the opening scene starts out um, in 2050 where we're at and you see um, Adam Reed played by a, um, Ryan Reynolds, Adam Reed is being, he's in a spacecraft and he's being chased and shot at or whatnot. And, um, and I guess he's trying to open up the wormhole. You soon find out he's trying to open up a wormhole to get to where he needs to get to in the past. And you see the, um, the spaceship pursuing him. You see a voice coming out, please surrender, come back or whatnot. And of course, Ryan, he keeps on, um, on this course to try to evade the people who are pursuing them or pursuing him. So naturally he opens up the time warm the the wormhole <laughs> and, and shoots and shoots through um and shoots on through the wormhole and he goes back in time. And so from there, after that scene, the next scene um we see is um I guess his younger self in 2022 is the setting and I guess we're on a high school campus or junior high campus and you see Adam Reed as a youngster and this is the um, Walker Scoville plays the younger Adam Reed and you see right away he's a real smallish kid nerdy like I don't know you want to say he's nerdy like but he's a smallish kid but Despite his size, he has a mouth on him, real smart, Alex, smart ass mm -hmm. mouth on him. And he has his own set of bullies. And even though he has these bullies, it doesn't keep him being a little smart, <laughs> a yeah. smart ass. He keeps on being the smart ass throughout the, um, 
in that terms a common theme, he's just a little wisecracking, smart ass kid. Yeah. So we see him getting bullied. His mom gets so fight now, fight whatever his mom gets called um, to come pick him up. And this is where we finally we see um, Jennifer Garner. She plays the mom, and you get the sense this has had this has happened before him getting bullied, getting into fights or whatnot. And it's starting to affect her, her job because she has to keep constantly leaving her job to come pick him up. And the thing I thought that was funny here, not funny, but just, it just reinforces how much of a smart ass he is because he's as smart ass as his mom as well. Yeah. <laughs> or whatnot. So I just thought that was, that's just his makeup. He's just a, a, a little wisecracking, smart aleck dude to begin with. So we move on to him later that evening. I guess the mom's getting ready to go out on a date. And of course, he keeps his wisecracking stuff going on with her and whatnot. And so she goes out on to the date or whatnot. So that sets up the scene uh, that's going to be forthcoming with um, him eventually running into his older self. Mm -hmm. um, impressions that you get between his interactions your your previous what do you think when you first saw him as a kid um well i didn't like the way he spoke to his mother however um i thought he was a cute kid funny kid he um i liked the way he was still talking smack even when they were beating him yeah, up getting, while they were getting while, while he was getting beaten up he's still <laughs> talking smack so mom she goes out on a day so this sets up the um, the scene for Adam 2050, that's what I call him. The, to tell the difference between the two all, the Ryan Reynolds Adam, I call him Adam 2050. And then, of course, young Adam, I just say young Adam. So while young Adam is playing his video game, you see the lights flash, you see the dog look up or whatnot, and the dog goes off running out into the woods. Um, they live near the woods. Um, either near the woods or right by the woods or during the woods. It's a wood-like area, so the dog goes running off into the woods. So, of course, young Adam gets chased. Um, he loses the dog or whatnot. He can't find the dog, and he looks up, and he starts seeing a whole bunch of sparkling lights. or was something like fireflies, when it's like the sparkling lights or stuff in the sky or whatnot. And then, of course, the dog comes back. They start hearing noises or whatnot, so Adam decides... You know what, it's time to get back to the house. So they make a beeline back towards the house. And again, the dog, just keep an eye on the dog. The dog will always lets you know when something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So you see the dog looks up again, hears some noise. The dog goes running off into, was it the back house or something? Is that maybe? So the boy follows him. Young Adam follows the dog into the back house, whatever you want like to call it. You know, garage, you know, back house, garage. And he goes in there. Flashlight, why don't, not just, but they always go in these dark things and they never turn on the light. Maybe Nor a light switch is there, he had a flashlight. Just turn on the light. Maybe there wasn't, was there a light switch? Yeah, the memory said turn off the light when he left. He didn't turn oh. <laughs> But when he first walked in there, he got the flashlight, like just turn on the light. But anyway, that's just one of my things when people go into these dark rooms, you know it's a light switch, just, just turn on the light. But anyway, he got the flashlight panning around and, um, and he sees um, Ryan Reynolds or Adam 2050 sitting there or whatnot. And they start having a little back and forth conversation. Um, <clears throat> and then um, you see Adam 2050 asking Adam how old he is. And then Adam tells him I'm 12 years old. So he gets this little look on his face like something, something's not quite right here and whatnot. So, but he proceeds to tell him, I need, I guess in the, in, while he was fleeing, he got shot. So he's injured, bleeding profusely. So he needs to clean himself up or whatnot. And he asked Adam, um, the young Adam, you know, I need to go in the house and patch myself up so I can start um, chilling myself or whatnot or getting healed or whatnot because he has other places, things he needs to do or whatnot. So he makes it. Proceeds his way into the house and he's just walking around like he knows where everything is or whatnot. Um, <clears throat> and um, the dog immediately knows oh, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He immediately doesn't 
you know, bark at him or anything. He just goes over and just snuggles up next to him. Yeah, while he was in the back. Yeah, yeah. Good option. That's yeah. when you really know that it's uh, that the him in the future. Because it, yep, exactly. So Adam, 2050, he's in the house, just walking around like, he say like he knows, like he's been there before mm -hmm. or whatnot. So they start to little banter back and forth. Young Adam's just pestering him with questions after questions. And this is where you really get to see that they really, they pair these two up really well. Because mm -hmm. you know how Ryan Reynolds is and his quirky self back and forth. And this boy was just on beat with him. And you just see the... Yeah. Quick with it, back and forth, so you can see it was a really good pairing in terms of how they interacted with one another. So I thought that was um, a real good um, matchup with those two. But um, as they're going back and forth with their banter um, and some of the questions he's asking and just some of the um, how Adam 2050 is going about the house and doing certain things around the house that only they would know, so to speak. Um, young Adam, I would say he's smart, quick quick thinker and he starts pitting two and two together like hey are you me or whatnot because there's some some similar stuff they happen I think he mentions a scar mm -hmm. wearing the father's watch so it doesn't take long for young Adam to realize um, who this person is and, and then of course Adam 2050 confirmed yeah I'm you from the future um, and then you know, Adam starts going through um, some of the belongings he brought Young Adam starts going through some of the belongings he brought back with him. And I just thought, and he pulls out a weapon that looks like a weapon. And he says, this is a lightsaber. And I thought this just became a common, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but the little lightsaber scene from Star Wars. And it just seemed to keep creeping up, just Star Wars references. At least to me, it kept creeping up because I'm a Star Wars person. So it just kept creeping up throughout the movie. But um, of course, um, Adam 25, no, it's not lightsaber, yada, yada, yada. But they go back and forth and um, with their banter. And so this is where you learn why sort of why Adam 2050 is coming back in the first place. So um, he's mentioning um, he wanted, he's coming back to investigate what happened to his wife, um, which is Laura, played by Zoe Saldana. He's coming back to investigate what happened to her because... In their time, she had disappeared a couple years prior, and it just something didn't sit right with him. So basically, that's why he was coming back or going through the wormhole in the first place to try to figure out what happened to his wife. The only thing was, he was supposed to go back to 2018, mm -hmm. but during the pursuit while he was being chased or whatnot, he ended up getting back to 2022. So, um, so this is where you just start trying to piece together some of the time travel stuff and trying to, like for me, trying to, trying to grasp what's really going on in terms of the time travel and how all that stuff works. So he is supposed to be in 2018. He lands in 2022 or whatnot. And so again, during their banter, we learned that the ship is only crafted towards the pilot's DNA. Um... But, and the ship, he's able to heal himself. It sounded like he was able to heal himself. Mm -hmm. And the ship was able to repair itself because the ship got um, damaged um, while they were fleeing. So, so while the ship was damaged, they needed, needed to take time to repair itself. So they're going, he's going to be there a couple days or whatnot in 2022. And so he goes on to explain that um, <clears throat> that he's, Supposed to get back to 2018, went to the find out what happened to um, his wife. And we learned somewhere during this conversation that she also was at the academy. She was an excellent pilot, and things just didn't add up. Um, when, because of the houses explained to him in 2050, something that happened to her ship upon reentry back into their timeline. And he was like, that's impossible because he's like the best pilot I know. And there's no way she would have messed up her reentry, so um, that made him suspicious on her whole disappearance and what or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So at this point, are you still following along with the plot and the timeline stuff? Uh, yeah. Okay. 
So at this point, I'm not confused about anything. He used Poe to go 2018, ended up in 2022, and we get the good reason why he's why he went back in the first place. Um, then, of course, he mentions um, he needs to hurry up and find stuff before they find him or whatnot. So we're assuming they are the people that were chasing him in the first place. So as the scene closes out for that particular thing, he pulls out a picture of Laura, who again is a Zoe Saldana. And um, and then we see um, that uh, folks that were pursuing them, they actually land in 2022. So that's setting up for what's coming next. So we get, um, so moving on, we get another, um, I guess the next day, we get a mother-son scene with, um, Jennifer Garner and young Adam and just again he still being a jerk to her pretty much or whatnot and um and so just just that little just some of the stuff they got to do to show how he was as a kid or whatnot and and how he treated his mom and then we learn um that was it a year or so prior to dad had died in a car accident mm -hmm. And so maybe that's why he's acting some of the way he is. We don't know for sure, but um, you can tell by the way um, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds Adam um, reacts to um, the young him talking back, back to his to mother. Mom, yeah. You can tell that he really regrets that. Um, that's something that he really regrets as an adult. And during the movie, he tries to somewhat correct that through young Adam. Yeah, so, um, and that really is highlighted in, uh, I guess, the scene where um, Jennifer Garner, she's at a, um, she goes to a, bub, a pub or, or a, a bar and, and uh, Adam 2050 is there and he, trying to tell her, um, yeah, young Adam really loves you or whatnot, and he knows you're still coping with the death of um, your husband, his father, or not, so you just need to tell him, stop trying to be so strong and just let him know you're still coping with it too. He needs to, he needs to know that as well, mm -hmm. um, what you're going through and how you're dealing with it. So um, maybe he will come around um, and, and, and have some empathy towards you as well so that he's not taking it all on himself. Mm -hmm. I like that scene. Yeah, it was a good between the mother and adult Adam, because he, you know, how many of us were kind of horrible to our parents a little bit, and we wish we could go back and do things differently. So this is his chance to go back and kind of repair that relationship a little bit. So by now, um. We know that the plan was to go back to um, 2018 to try to figure out what happened to um, his wife. And as we learn more and more about his suspicions, he feels that um, Maya Sorian has something, may have had something to do with um, his wife's disappearance or, or whatnot. So, so, um, so he's just trying to figure out what happened to her. Um, so we have um, following the touchy touchy scene with um, him and um, Adam 2050 and his mom um, goes back. He's getting ready to spend the, um, some more time with his younger self. And while he's telling them, getting into some more details about Maya Sorian and why he's actually coming back there, um, he mentions um, this is where we first learn about what their dad did. Um, is that it was the dad's tech that Maya Sorian sort of got super rich off of, and then the young Adam's like, and how she's evil now in 2050, and then the young guy's like, no, Maya's always been nice to me or whatnot, and, he's, and Adam 2050 like, no, no, she, she's not, she's, she's really a, a terrible person. She got super rich off dad's um, tech, and so um, she got super rich off his tech, she came into power, so to speak, because in 2050, time travel, if you in control of time travel, you pretty much control everything. And in 2050, she is in control of the time travel tech and it's all hers or whatnot. So at this point, I'm thinking 
she may have went back there and she took out the dad to get in control of the stuff that's or what whatnot. Thought, so I'm thinking but... that's what she was doing or what she had done and and that was something that was going to come out later on and that's what that's why the wife originally went back there but then the timelines didn't add up in terms of the dad's death and, and stuff mm -hmm. so but initially that was my thinking it wasn't like that but Maya Sorian she is she she's the antagonist but she wasn't she didn't do what I thought she had done in terms of killing off the dad. The dad just actually just died of that natural natural causes in the car accident, but um or whatnot. But but we also find out that the dad's tech it wasn't based on time travel. That's something he sort of lucked into. It was like you said, it was discovered by accident. Um, the time travel thing. So discovered by accident or whatnot. And, um, and so he wanted to go back again and see what happened in, in 2018. So, so while they're having this discussion about, um, about why he was told to get back to 2018, but he ended up in 2022, we see the dog look up. Remember, keep an eye on the dog. Dog gives up stuff, gives stuff away. So the dog looks up while he's in the middle of his story. And sure enough, soon after that, um, for Maya's, um, they found them. Her forces come through the door, and they have their good old fight scene, or whatnot. And they start fighting. Um, he pulls out that weapon that Adam thought, young Adam thought, was a lightsaber. He lights it up, and it looked like a lightsaber to me. It's pretty much a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> the dark, the Darth Maul variety, the double edged thing that Darth Maul had, but um, looked like a lightsaber to me. But I said some of that Star Wars stuff creeping my butt. They had a fight scene. They looking around, and Adam's kick young Adam, 2050s kicking butt. Um, of course, he apparently like he went in the fight. Then Maya, then we meet the other person, Christos. He comes in the scene. They start fighting. Just when you think it's lights, what curtains for um, Adam 2050? Because they pretty much have him pinned down. Lo and behold, guess who he gets saved by? Laura, she come out of no place, just shooting, shooting, shooting. We're like, well, where'd she come from? I thought she went back to 2018. She comes out, she saves them from that um, particular um, predicament, and um, and they get away, a little car scene, car chasing occurs, they get away or whatnot. So she explains to them what really went down. So this is where I started perking up my ears, because this is where all the time travel stuff can get confusing mm -hmm. when they start explaining this stuff. So, thing is, 2018, back, well, in 2050, she was going like she's, whatever her role is in 2050, she was going through logs or whatnot. She found some, she found um, an anomaly, that someone that made a jump back to 2018. And she's actually just explaining to um, Adam 2050, it's like, no one has ever gone back to 2018, so she wanted to see what that was all about or whatnot. And so she started investigating it, and then she found out that it was actually Maya Sorian who went back to 2018. And she wanted to know why Maya Sorian went back to 2018. So, and so this is where we get to the heart of the matter or, or whatnot. So she went back to 2018 and she found out that Maya Sorian, um, remember that she was, we found out she was, she was partners with the dad back in 2018. <clears throat> the dad was the science and the brains behind the tech, but she was the one who funded it. She was the money behind whatever experiments or science he had going on. And she went back to a specific point in time in 2018 where she could take advantage of, um, I guess I had explained it on, on the thing just before it went online. So she was able to make any stock deals, investments, buy off the right people just in time for her to be able to take full advantage and ownership of the tech, which of course she used all the way up through her whatever place she had in 2050, which if you listen to um, Adam 2050, it was a terrible place 
living in 2050, and that's largely due because my uh, Saurian was corrupt, <laughs> basically. And this is where it all started, was in 2018, when she took advantage of, um, when she went back, and that was another thing, she went back to 2018, and she had altered the timeline. So this is where you start, start you really got to start thinking, because he landed in 2022, so when he landed in 2022, the timeline had already been altered because mm -hmm. Maya Sorian had previously went back to 2018 and she altered the timeline. Um, so they were already living in the altered timeline when he went back to 2022. And that's what um, Laura had explained to him. So she went back to 2018. She found out what she found out. Maya found out. She went back to 2018 and found out what she found out. So before Laura could get back, she sabotaged. She had crystals. We actually found out was the one who sabotaged the ship. They thought she had died, but she survived. Now, obviously, she had survived. So she is stuck in 2018 in hopes <laughs> that, <laughs> that Adam 2050 would come look for her. So this whole time between 2018 when she originally went back the 2018 to 2022, she was stuck living there. So she had been there for four years by the time Adam had got back there in 2022 and the timeline had already been altered. Mm -hmm. So that's the genesis, I believe, of what went down. And now they were to follow it. Sometimes you do the time travel stuff, you can't follow it. Um, I think I was able to follow it. They explained it pretty good. They explained you know, some of these time travel movies. You're not supposed to share the same space and all this other weird stuff they make up, but they they did a good job of explaining explaining that. Um, um, young Adam did ask him, "Will he remember any of this mm -hmm. or whatnot?" Um, all the experience that's happened in 2022, and they did a good job of explaining it, saying if they were to turn back to their timeline, they'll pretty much forget what's occurring now that's the way it seemed to me when he was when that question came up from young adam was he going to remember any of this but there that's what is really going on what happened with her um maya sorian she went back and altered the timeline so she could take advantage of um of the time travel stuff because like we said it was discovered by accident so by the time it went online originally Maya didn't have control over it. So that she wanted to go back and have control over it. So she went back to 2018 and had control over it because on the original timeline, I guess they didn't have control over it because they didn't know what they had. Mm -hmm. So she wanted to change all that where she was the person in control of everything. And make enough money so she could fund it. Fund it, um, be in control of it, yeah. So she went and took advantage of the whole thing before it was invented, well not before it was invented, before it went online and made known to everybody else. She positioned herself to take full advantage of it, to be in control of it, and hence in 2050 she is the probably most powerful person there is in 2050 because she controls time travel. And, it, and the only way she was able to accomplish that because she had to go back to 2018 to put the pieces in place in order for that to happen. Okay, so I'm still following. I'm still cool with it. I still know what they're doing. So, so Laura explains to um, Adam 2050. So, in order to stop what's going on in 2050, you got to go back to 2018 and just tear it down, destroy the machine, and just time travel. Make it so time travel never gets um, invented. Or discovered, or however you want to, you got you got to stop that time travel from ever um, being um, discovered. Which, of course, Adam twenty fifty doesn't want to do because they met at the academy for time travel. So if he goes back and prevents it from ever getting invented or discovered or whatnot, he's afraid they're never ever ever going to meet. So they had this big, not long discussion, but have a passionate discussion on why. Um, Laura explains to him, well, you got to go and do this and, and our love will find each other. You know how the, the love stuff goes. 
and our love's too strong, and we'll be able to fight each other regardless. So, but you need to go back and stop Maya from doing what Maya did. So, the only way to do that, you got to destroy this time machine and uh, put everything back the way it was supposed to be. But he goes and does it. Um, of course, he needs to take young Adam with him because at this point, he's still injured to the point where he can't use his own DNA to power up his ship. So, Adam has to go with him back to 2018. And this is where we... You know what? I know this has... Nothing to do with anything, but as a mother, I just kept thinking when they were going back to 2018, I just kept thinking I really wish they would leave a note for his mother or something like that so she doesn't think something happened. Because I'm like, yeah. what is going to happen when she comes home and the house was destroyed? Oh, yeah. And then the kid <laughs> is not there. But that was just me thinking. Like yeah, they, 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 they did leave some stuff out. Well, the house, yeah, they jacked up the house. Um, He's not there. They, they left some stuff unanswered in terms mm -hmm. of stuff like that. But the time travel stuff, I got. The mother stuff, like she's <laughs> like Ty saying, yeah. They left some holes, some holes um, there. So, so, um, so they're getting ready to go back to 2018. And, of course, we see um, in order to do that, um, Laura, of course, they find them again. Um, <coughs> and Laura pretty much sacrifices herself to give Adam time to get back to a ship and get the wormhole opened up so they can go back to 2018 and this is where we get confirmation that of course Maya and, and Crystal indeed um, they thought they had killed her but you know she said when I get a chance to kill you for a second time or whatnot or she should stay dead the first time so and you just left with the image of the guns going off and so you're assuming Laura got killed so they're able to make the jump. And again, while they're trying to evade them, um, it gives this like very Star Trek y type scene. Not Star Trek, Star Wars type scene where they're trying to fly, fly and get to the Death Star. They're going down this little valley thing. Mm -hmm. You probably, you remember, I don't remember Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Star Wars, <laughs> Star Wars, there's a scene where, they're, where Luke is flying the ship and they're trying to line up things for this Death Star. And there's a very reminiscent scene that seemed like in, in this, but that's. Star Wars type stuff. Just thought that was just a common theme they kept going on throughout the thing. So I started looking for Star Wars stuff. Not to digress, but back to this. Um, so they get to 2018, and this is where you finally meet uh, Mark Ruffalo, who plays the dad. And he immediately, and I guess we first see um, Lewis Reed is the, is the name in the, in the, in the movie. Um, he's in the lecture hall, and he's giving a lecture to his um, students. Um, Adam 2050 sitting there, he raises his hand, asks a question, and you see Mark Ruffalo's character recognizes him literally, like right away. And it doesn't take long for him to realize what's going on. He knows Adam 2050's from the future, and they get into why are you doing here, what's up, what's going on, and he's trying to tell him about Maya and how she turns out. Um, of course, Mark doesn't believe it, I mean, Lewis. <laughs> Lewis doesn't believe it because, you know, they are partners. And at this particular time, Maya, she's uncorrupted, so we thought. Um, but by this time, we know the other Maya had already been there in 2018. Mm -hmm. Well, she had already visited her in 2018. Um, and, and I guess the young Maya was already um, taking steps to, to get her um, investments in place to get the people bought off she needs to use. She was already doing that, but her level of corruptness was still not where Maya twenty fifty is. <laughs> not even yeah, close. not even close. But she, but um, but but this was the second time you find out this was not the first time Maya twenty fifty has has been back there, and um, so she had already started planting seeds in, in in the young Maya, and and of course, um, in there's some little back and forth between young Maya. She doesn't agree with what Maya 2050 wants to do or whatnot in terms of disposing of them because now that's what Maya 2050 wants to do. She wants to dispose them so she can keep her place in, in 2050 or whatnot. So, um, so as they're going through, and <clears throat> of course another, um, so they, the father agrees, you know, we need to go ahead and stop time travel. And all this time they're going on, 
And the secondary story here is they want to tell the father what's going to happen in a couple years in terms of the car accident. And, of course, he doesn't want to know when he says, you can't tell me. There's some things that's pretty consistent through all time travel moves. We can't know the future. Don't tell me the future. Um, I'll help you do this to get everything back on its original timeline, but I can't know what happens to me personally. So, um, and so they don't tell him what happens to him um, per, um in terms of his car accident, but... Oh, I was just going to say, you know what I really enjoyed about seeing um, Lewis with young Adam and 2050 Adam is that 2050 Adam was like saying all this stuff about how his father wasn't there for him and he was always working and stuff like that. But then young Adam was like, no, he's mm -hmm. not. Like, he's always here. He plays catch with, mm -hmm. a, with us or whatever. So young Adam remembers the good stuff, but older Adam is kind of remembering, you know, the times when he wasn't there. So that was interesting to that see the, you know, how different their recollection mm -hmm. is, you know, and um, it kind of, um, it was just kind of interesting because it shows how as adults we may look back on our childhood and and remember the bad stuff and like kind of not remember the good that happens mm -hmm. so i like that part you know it's like totally opposite so it's the, the the young adam um treated the mom Horribly, but the older Adam looked back on the mom fondly, while the mm -hmm. older Adam, 2050, looked back on the father like contempt and anger. Mm -hmm. And the younger Adam's like, no, like you're saying, he was there for me. So that was a good, um, how those, that, that relationship played out amongst the, um, the parents and, and the son there, and how each one thought differently of the parents mm -hmm. and, and the reckoning they both had to have with that. So, um, yeah, so some good storytelling there in, in the mix of all this action and stuff that was going on. So um, um, that was good. So um, so they had their fight scene near the reactor and just throw another Star Wars thing out there. Remember that scene where Ben, Obi-Wan, Kenobi's fighting Darth Vader? Vader? Very similar like scenery to me. He's like near the reactor or whatnot and they doing their fight scene. But just another Star Wars thing I started looking for. But it seemed very Star Wars to me. But anyway... Um, Long story, sure. Not Please gonna do don't. those do those spoilers and we'll just leave it off at that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it off at that. Um, she, she's known for giving us spoilers. I don't I don't give up the spoilers. Oh my alert. goodness, you were about to give out like the whole ending of the I had to stop him because he was about to give out the ending. So anyway. That said, we will end it there. It's a good movie. It's just out on Netflix now. I believe it's in the top 10 of their new releases in terms of uh, movies. Um, again, we watched it as part of our Friday movie family night. Um, we decided, hey, this is pretty good. Let's go ahead and do our review on this one. I'm glad we did. It was an entertaining movie for family movie night if you're looking for something like that. Um, we enjoyed it. And on my rating scale, I give it a good... Um, Seven and possibly even even an eight because a time travel movie sometimes they can go real complicated and they are hard to follow. This particular one, I think I was able to know and keep up with what was going on. They explained the stuff, they explained the overlaps, didn't have all this confusion about same people sharing the same space. I know it was some time travel movies. It's a catastrophe if that happens. You're not allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think this one explains a lot of that stuff really well without getting too overly complicated. Um, you had the one altered timeline. I think for me that made it simpler when you have only the one timeline that may have possibly been altered um, instead of multiple timelines being altered. So I think it was simple and easy to follow. And I give it a good, hey, good for entertainment, good family night movie. Um, um, for me, what say you? Um, I think it's interesting that you gave it a higher score. I mean, a lower score than the Lifetime movie. <laughs> I mean, you gave Tatiana's movie an eight. Yeah, eight. 
You said a seven, maybe eight for this maybe one. Maybe eight. Okay. <laughs> I would give it a nine. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, as a nine said, for a movie she didn't really want to see. <laughs> <laughs> as Corey said, um, they did a great job explaining it. Um, because I can get confused very easy. So I was able to follow, kind of. And um, I love, love, love the cast. Like a movie, I always comment on the cast, but for me, a movie can be completely destroyed if you have a horrible cast. And I love Mark Ruffalo. Um, huge fan of his. And... You know, Ryan Reynolds is funny, but he seems to... Play the same type of person. Yeah. And he was kind of the same type, type of person, person in, in this, this one. one. But, you know... What made this one interesting was, was, the, was the little... Was the boy. Yeah. They, they, they interacted definitely matched with them up. So that was good. Very well. So, yeah. I would give it a nine. And I did like those... Um, I know Corey is all about the action... But I did like those heartfelt moments, like the moment with uh, older Adam and the mother and the one with uh, the father and the two of them. Um, and then there's a really, really sweet moment at the end, but I won't tell you what it is. But um, yeah, so I'll give it a nine. All right. All right. See a nine for someone who didn't want to see it. Hey. But um, anyway, <laughs> thanks for taking the time out to give us a watch. If you enjoyed this um, review or recap, please hit the like button. If you enjoy this type of content in general, please subscribe to our station. And if you haven't yet, please check out our other um, recaps and reviews and, and leave comments on those as well. So again, until um, next time, thank you for taking the time to watch us. And thank you. See you next time.